what I liked about this film mm. is that it's kinetic from the very get go, which uh -huh. is kind of a rare because normally in the film like this you have a, a big Build. long yeah, but mm. you just went right into it, which mm. I think is a very kind of almost daring kind of like move. Uh -huh. and, and why did you choose that kind of just to, just to get we just go right into it? There's a train and it's it's unstoppable, you know. And uh, well, you know, it's funny because that's how it began. I don't know. In my first cut it was like it was the the day waking up, the day beginning, the guys. Looking at each other, sizing each other up, and, and you've got you know you've got Kurtz and Captain Kirk here, you know the old guard and the new guard. The young the new guard gets the job because of nepotism. So, you, so it's a character-driven piece, and it's the day waking up and you sense the smell, this 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 malcontent. Um, but then when I looked at the first cut, I said, no, I want to get to it sooner because for me the movie starts at, should start at 50 miles an hour rather than 10 miles an hour, and ends up at 150. And then I'm, I'm it's a, and then I'm resolving, letting our characters resolve the difference, differences through the course of this journey. So I took from the real world in terms of asked two guys, what was your first day like together, old guard, new guard? And they gave me their day, which is very, very similar. But they didn't run down a runaway train. These two guys. So we took, I took the two worlds and and cobble them together. But the cheeky thing, what you've done is you've, you've also created this film where most of the people are actually in a compartment and so you're actually yeah. watching almost a play of sorts, you uh -huh. know? So so what was it like to, because you've got two versions now, you've got this train that's like, uh -huh. you know, and then you've got this kind of character piece uh -huh. uh, that develops as the film goes on. But see, that was what, that was my, that was its, that I think was its strength and that was my challenge and that's what was scary for me creatively. I said, damn, this could, you know, if I didn't, if I didn't handle it right, it could just be a two-hander Close up, two shots, single, single, and then blah, 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 the train. But what I did, I said, I'm not going to be inhibited by being on a, a train at 80 miles an hour. I'm going to shoot it like I'm in this room or I'm on a stage. I'll do, I'll forget I'm moving it. So I'll do 360 degree tracks. I'll put my camera here. I'll do a helicopter coming in there. So I do. I did multi cameras, and you know, and, and we'd, I'd find 10 or five mile sections of track. Once the train's up to speed, I'd do, I'd do what I call three in a row. We'd run you know, three, seven or ten minute pieces of dialogue, and the boys love it. I mean, the boys love it, actors, because they feel they've got the helicopter out there and this train's got real speed and they're fighting the noise, and so you get a difference in terms of performance and energy, which was, uh, which is challenging, but great. I, I'm surprised that you did mm. find, you said that this film was actually one of your hardest films to uh -huh. shoot, because you've done so much prior, which right. seems to be even more technically, or, you know, uh -huh. so why would you say this one is, is the most difficult then? Well, creatively, what you just said at the beginning was right. You, you, basically, it's a, it's a two-hander, it's a theater piece, two guys sitting in the cab. But for me, I saw that as a challenge and a plus. I said, let me let these characters unfold in this tight space through the course of this insanity. Yeah? And so that, for me, creatively, was a challenge. And then, um, and it was just challenging because, you know, when we're in Pennsylvania from September till Christmas, <laughs> and it was, it was raining, snowing, freezing cold, and. And, and also I had to have my shit together in terms of should the train be going right to left today or left to right? One day I got it wrong and it cost me a day shooting. And I got to pay for it. <laughs> you're, you're an extremely prolific director in a sense that mm. it seems like you make a film almost one a year, which uh, is pretty yeah. awesome. I mean, so, so what is it that kind of drives you to continually kind of develop and then make and then the next time, you know, just is it challenge, is it fear? What kind of drives it's, you to... It's, you know, as you say, my challenge and my fear is never to repeat myself. My challenge is to approach different worlds, even though I did trains before, not really a subway. Um, and this is Jaws, you know. Um, uh, and I, I, I love to work. I love to, and I love to, and as I say, I, my fix was don't be inhibited by speed. Shoot it like you're on a stage, you know, and, uh, and that was one of my my uh, mantras in terms of how I approach my day each day. Does it help to have someone like Denzel, who you've worked so many times before, uh, um, does it kind of cut down on preparation in the sense that you don't have to tell him certain things and he can just nope. go right into No, really? Why not? <laughs> no, no, because Denzel's, he's, he's difficult, I'm difficult, we're always we're difficult for the right reasons, we're always reaching for difference or reaching for reinventing ourselves or, and so our process is always constructive, it's never been destructive. You, what you can find is when somebody's wanting to, what if I did, but we always, we find role models in life, so we have, but I've done always a lot of homework before we hit the ground running. And obviously in this you can't say, it trains 80 miles an hour, and <laughs> or what was that, how, how should it, what about this line, or, <laughs> so, but, um, but Denzel and I think we, we both have the same work ethic, and um, I do a lot of homework, so I come very prepared, and especially for a movie like this, if you're not, you're in trouble. And I love that preparation, and it's not me being a good guy, 
I love what I do, and I love the fear and the challenge of what I do. Last question then. I mean, you have Denzel and you've worked with him mm -hmm. before. Uh, what was it to kind of almost make a uh, decision to bring Chris in? Because obviously he's new, and, and, and uh -huh. so it's, it's almost like a big uh, risk on your end to kind of uh, bring no, him in. No, listen, I, listen I've, used, I've used Denzel five times with Gene Hackman twice, and Tom Cruise twice. But, but, uh, and I, I was looking somewhere different. I was looking for more blue collar in terms of Chris's role. First, it was actually Denzel said, you know what? There's, I think there's a, you know, it's, it's about a chemistry, and Denzel's a, a director as well. So he and I talk, and and there's a, and he said there's a great, I think there's a great marriage between Chris and I, and, and then I saw it, and then we, re, and I said, pretty boy gets the job because of nepotism. So we rehoned the character based off a real guy that I met. It was pretty, got the job because of nepotism. Old guard losing his job because the new guard's coming in, and so, and Chris and, and Denzel are a brilliant marriage together.